Now, where um, where Planck started his um, his uh, sort of theoretical development again is by assuming that energy. So Rayleigh and Jeans assume that energy, that the average energy in each one of the modes that that is possible that can exist in the cavity is const is is the same. They basically said that each mode has the same average energy equal to K, the, the Boltzmann constant times the temperature. And Planck said, okay, let's start by assuming that energy actually comes in discrete chunks. And then he used um, another one of Boltzmann's um, uh, results, uh, which is that the probability of uh, of a mode uh, actually existing in the uh, in the cavity, so the probability that a um, that a particular wave mode will exist in the cavity is not uniform, but actually depends on the energy of that mode, and um, and that basically, in the end, as we'll see, lead uh, sort of resolves the ultraviolet catastrophe. Okay, so what Boltzmann had shown um, is that the probability of having um, an energy uh, in a, a energy en okay in a particular mode which we designate by the nth mode okay again it's just an index uh, is given by uh, p sub n that's the probability um, is equal to a where a is just some normalization constant times e to the minus en divided by kt where en again is the energy of that mode okay and so, um, since uh, Planck was basically assuming that the energy, remember, in the cavity we have these different modes that have these different wavelengths. So, for example, we have the half wavelength mode where one half of, the, of a wave uh, of the electromagnetic radiation fits into the cavity. And we have this other mode where a full wave fits in the electromagnetic cavity. And then we have any multiple of a half wavelength in all different directions plus the diagonal terms plus the diagonal modes so all these different modes have slightly different wavelengths okay some of them may have the same and we call that degenerate um, but that but but in general they have different wavelengths which means that they have different energies and so that implies the probability of having of, of these different of having these actually different modes these different wavelength modes exist within the cavity depends on the energy okay of, of that mode which then depends on the wavelength or the or the um, or the uh, frequency and so with Planck with Planck's hypothesis here then this probability um, of having an energy in a particular mode is equal to that same normalization constant times e to the minus n h nu divided by kt so n again is just the index if we assume that that there's some fundamental um, chunk of energy um, uh, then, and that all the other modes are somehow uh, some multiple of those or at least that in the different directions that's true then you get you get such an expression okay so uh, so the next thing we have to do is to figure out what this um, what this normalization constant a is now what does normalization mean in this context well um, what it means is that if you integrate or you sum over all the different modes, right? The energy has to be in one of the modes. Okay, so if you have some, um, you know, am am amount of energy, one of these mode that it has to be in one of the modes. And so if you sum up all the different um, uh, probabilities of having the energy in a particular mode, okay, so then you just pl you just sum over this expression over here, okay. And that has to be equal to one. So the total probability of having energy in A mode has to be one. Okay. Now, if we basically, uh, if we group these terms, including the negative sign, okay, that's a con for a particular fundamental frequency nu and temperature t. That's all a constant. Okay. And so we can, um, if we call this, um, so if we call e to the minus uh, h nu over kt, if we call that e q, okay, then we can rewrite this expression as a sum from n equals 0 to infinity of q to the n. Okay, so that's just going to help us do some of the math.